So we can start installing Ubuntu. So I think most of the remote centers are keeping one more extra PC for installing Ubuntu. Then they can put the CD in the CD-ROM drive and they can start installation. I will demonstrate it from here also. So when you put the CD and restart the machine, the screen will look like this. So we started Ubuntu installation. When you put the CD on the CD-ROM and boot it from the CD, the screen will look like this. So the screen appear try Ubuntu. So actually if you click on try Ubuntu button what will happen means it's actually not installing to the hard disk. When you click on try Ubuntu a live desktop will come. So you can see the live desktop. So now we want to install Ubuntu then you want to click on install Ubuntu. Then you can start install Ubuntu. If you click on the install Ubuntu, you want to install it on your hard disk. So I am clicking on install Ubuntu. Click on this. So first it is asking for the country. So I am specifying India. Then click on forward. So next the keyboard layout is coming by default it uh, Ubuntu automatically detect the key, uh, keyboard layout by default it is USA so I am clicking forward. This is the important thing that is we want to format the hard disk. Actually for installing Ubuntu we need only two partitions that is one is slash and another one is swap partition. Swap partition means it is exactly like virtual memory in Windows, but in Windows we are not specifying the virtual memory by default it is taking. But in Ubuntu or any Linux distribution you want to specify the swap space. That means it will take what are the space we are giving if it is a 1 TB, sorry 1 GB, 2 GB, 500 MB anything it is reserve that space for swap space means virtual memory concept in Windows. So if you want to increase virtual memory after installation also it is possible to increase the virtual memory. So here you can see many partitions in my hard disk is already installed with some other, uh, Ubuntu in, uh, versions that is why it is showing here like this slash dev sda1 swap and slash dev sda6 something something like that. So other you can see install side by side choosing between each step. Install them side by side choosing between each startup. That means you have one hard drive with one partition which containing windows. Then the partition would be shrunk down and second partition is created on the drive to put Ubuntu. That is why it is called install side by side. It will install windows as well as Ubuntu in a single hard disk. The second option is erase and use the entire disk. That means Ubuntu will automatically erase the entire hard disk and proceed with the installation. The third option you can see specify partitions manually. When you want to specify the partitions manually, you want to specify the partition then only it will work. So now I am clicking on specify partitions manually advanced and click on forward. 
the another screen will come. So you can see I already installed some Ubuntu on this machine that is why it is showing like this SDA1, SDA5, SDA6, SDA7 etc. etc. That is why it is showing like this. So I am deleting these partitions. I think most of the people know what is SDA, SDB, SDC and SDD. SDA means that is the first hard disk, SDB means second hard disk, SDC means third hard disk. In my machine there is only one hard disk that is why it is showing SDA. I know I am deleting these partitions. Delete. Now you can see around 1 TB space is free here. On Terabyte you can see my free space is around 1 TB. So now I want to install because I have a lot of space for that I am splitting the partitions. By default for installation of Ubuntu we need only two partition that is slash and swap. So I am starting installation. First I am creating a partition for slash boot. I am specifying 200 MB for that partition. So here you can see what is the file system by default it is ext4 then I want to specify the mount point. So I am giving mount point as slash boot. So then slash boot means in this partition it is storing only boot loader related information configuration files. So you can give 500 MB or like that I am clicking on this. So it is created as slash boot partition while system type is ext4. Then I want to create a swap space. Normally for swap space we are specifying double the RAM. If you have 1 GB RAM you want to specify 2 GB as your swaps. So we have my machine has around 2 GB of RAM. So I am specifying 4 GB 4000. So then you change users ext4 change here you can see lot of option ext4, ext3, ext2 these are our older file systems then OCRFS, JFS, FAT. So I am clicking on swap area and click ok. So swap space is created. So normally it is double the RAM please note down if your memory is 2 GB then you want to specify 4 GB swap space. So again I am clicking on the free space. Now I want to create root partition that is slash partition. So normally 4 GB is recommended but in the slash most of the softwares are we are installing. What are the softwares we are installing that is moving in slash partition. So I am specifying slash partition around 50 GB. I am saying 50,000 and here I want to specify slash. slash partition. So remaining space again space is there now I, I can set home partition. If it only slash that is also okay but I have I want to create a lot of users I want to if I am reinstalling this machine I want to take all the users data then I want to specify a home partition that is better. So now I am specifying one more home partition around 100 GB. So I am specifying home partition. Okay. So right now the partition is completed you can see the partition is created slash sda1 ext4 slash boot sda5 for swap sda6 for slash and sda7 for slash home all the file systems are ext4. Now I want to put forward click on forward now it will ask for the computer name. So I am specifying my computer name as IITB your name then I want to specify the password. So here I am specifying the password, retype the password. So if I click forward then the installation will start. So I am click forward, now the installation is starting. Now it is asking for install. It is also showing language is English, keyboard layout is US, the name is name of the computer is IITB, login name is IITB, location is Asia Kolkata. So I am click on install, the installation will start. 
Okay, now the installation is started. It will take some time, around 10 to 15 minutes for installation. Now the installation is started. If you have any query regarding this, if you post it on the chat, then I will try to answer. One question from can we install Ubuntu in virtual boxes? Yes, it is possible to install Ubuntu on virtual boxes. But for this workshop, you want to install it on a PC. That is better. There is a question regarding dual boot. Dual boot is also possible. Please repeat the manual partition setting. Okay, okay. Someone want to repeat the manual partition. Okay, once the screen appear for the prepare disk, you can see one screen called prepare disk. In that, there is a lot. Two, three options are there. If in your machine already Windows is installed, it will say Windows Microsoft Windows or Windows 7 ins installed on slash dev SDA1 or SDA2 something like that it will appear here then there is two more options install them side by side and erase entire disk and specify the partitions manually I already explained these things erase entire disk means it will erase entire disk that means it will erase your windows also in and it will install Ubuntu on the entire hard disk and that's why we are specifying partitions manually specify the partitions manually so then we can specify the partitions manually so once they click on the specify partitions manually and forward then you can see another screen in that screen it will clearly display SDA1 and or SDA2 where the windows is installed you can see the uh, file system as NTFS or FAT32. So do not remove that partition. Then in the free space, you just install the Ubuntu. In the free space, you click on the free space and create the boot partition, slash partition, swap space and home. If very less partition, then you can create slash and swap space. That is okay. I think the doubt is clear. There is a question from slash and swap partition yes you can create only slash and swap partition that is fine one more question we install ubuntu by selecting use entire hard disk is that is okay that is okay but ubuntu will take entire hard disk as ubuntu if you have any windows or something else then it will automatically erase everything that is the only one problem please specify ubuntu version means we already put ubuntu 10.04.4 in the Moodle, if you want to use any other distribution, it is okay, but please use LTS versions and what are the softwares we are covering today and tomorrow that is compatible with that version, that software should work, that is the only one condition. Asking partition should be ext4 or ext3, ext4 is okay. Now one more important question, can you use apt-get to install MySQL, PHP5, Apache instead of the second CD? Yes, that is possible. If you have a good internet connection through APT get it is possible. If some of the senders have already APT mirrors are there, then you can kind of configure to that APT mirror and install. So I think some of the senders has very low bandwidth internet. So if they install MySQL and this thing, it will take so much time. That's why we send the CDs. So for that people they can use. If you have a high bandwidth internet then you can directly install it from the net also there is no issues I'm asking slash boot partition size is 200 MB or 500 MB you can specify 500 MB also it is okay how much time the installation process take the installation process will take around 10 minutes to 20 minutes so I think people can see the installation is going on it is already around 93 percent so we can come back yeah, there is a one good question boot windows with ubuntu will work properly yes it will work properly properly perfectly so you can see installation is complete you want to restart the computer in order to use the new installation so i am clicking on the restart now button the machine will restart what about mysql apache and php A lot of questions are coming regarding the software space. Do not post it on the chat. So it will come. Please remove the disk and close the tray and press enter. So I am doing that. So 
so regarding the software we will tell you what are the software i think already in the schedule we mentioned we are covering what are the things it is including basic web server configuration apache 2 then php 5 mysql and tomcat so after that we will in, um, tell you how to configure the clicker software that is going to be used on the main workshop that will be happen on 10th and 11th that is mainly using for attending quizzes using agash tablet that we will demonstrate tomorrow and regard, regarding the files and configurations we will post it on the moodle so uh, my machine is restarted now you can see the desktop so i am putting my password so now you can see the ubuntu installed desktop these are all the things so now i will explain how to install that softwares using the apton cd that we already sent the software cd so just put the cd on the cd drive yeah the screen appeared you can see start package manager once this window is came you click on the start package manager so it will ask for the password you want to give the correct password 23 password means that your system part password when you install that time what is the username it's asking for that password you give that password now the synaptic package manager is coming so you can see the synaptic package manager so in the above you can see there is an option called search so we want to type what the packages i am typing vim so you can see vim is already installed that's why it is coming like this I am trying with DDD. <coughs> so I am trying to install Apache. So I want to type Apache two. So you can see the Apache 2 came here. I am clicking on this mark for installation and you can see another window will come. It will mark all the dependency packages. What are the dependency packages is needed? It will show like this and click on mark and install. Play. This installing. So you can see the installation is complete. Wait for a moment. So this is the simple installation of the package, a single package. What are the package we required that we will discuss? Uh, my colleagues will tell you what are the packages required during their sessions but today we are now we are going for some simple commands so because most of the people are not familiar with the linux so i am going to in, uh, introduce some basic commands it is very useful for the beginners so we are starting with basic commands so for first we are looking present working directory for that we are the command is pwd pwd means present working directory it will show where i am in the terminal you can see slash home iit b okay itb the pwd is command for present working directory second is how we can create a folder or directory so for that command is mkdir the directory name so i am putting as test this is my directory so mkdir test now the directory is created so now i want to view this directories means listing directories that is ls you can see the directory is created test test this is a directory just now i created the ls means it is listing what are the directories there it is listing that 
So, if you want to see long listing means you want to put options on that this L s minus L it will display this things D means directory there is no D means it is a file symbol file. So, you can see in a directory I created with all the details what are the permissions what are the owner group and the date when I created the time everything you can see that is long format. So, every time I am typing a command called clear, clear means it will clear the entire screen ok that is clear. Also if you want to refer any command like you need because for every command there is lot of options means A to E said options are available. So, if you want to refer that commands you want to put a command called man that man means man pages man ls means it will display all the things ls is a command ls means listing directory contents then description then you can see ls minus a means all. So, then ls minus capital A like that you can see n number of options you can use this option you just go through this commands then only you can see. So, I want now I want to see hidden files in Linux hidden file means it is starting with dot. So, here I am giving L s minus L sorry L s minus L it is showing like this it is not showing any hidden files otherwise L s it is showing only this file. If you put the option L s minus A then it will display all the hidden files you can see lot of files are there with starting with dot, dot means it is a hidden file. In Linux the hidden files are represented like dot the file name. So, I am clearing the screen it is. So, just now I created a folder called test. So, now I want to change or go to that test folder for changing the current current directory right now the my current directory is slash home IITB. So, now I want to go to the test directory. So, the command for that is using cd test test. So, right now where are present my working directory is slash home IITB test. So, using the cd command you can change the directory cd means change the directory and you can go to that directory. Right now I, we want to create some file. Normally for creating files you can use a simple command called touch, touch 1, 1 dot txt. So, it will create only empty files, touch means you can create only empty files, there is nothing on the empty files sorry nothing on 1 dot txt. So, another thing with this good thing with touch command is you can create multiple empty files at a time. So, I am creating multiple files touch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 I created 5 empty files. Now, you put ls you can see multiple empty files that is the com command for creating multiple. So, now I want to delete a file or remove a file for in Linux we are it is calling removing a file for that we are using the command called rm. So, first I am going to remove 1 dot txt. So, rm 1 dot txt. So, if you give ls the 1 dot txt is removed rm is the command to remove a file. So, I am clearing the screen you can see now there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 files. So, now I want to rename a file means in Linux we are saying as moving a file mv 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 I am moving a file name called 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So, if you put ls you can see the name 1 is I am moved to 1, 2, 3 that is the command for moving a file. So, now I want to these all are empty files. So, I want to add some 
information for that I am using cat. Arrow, one, two, three. Now the cursor is blinking. That means we want to type what are the contents we need. Hello, W R L D. So I type hello word. Now I want to save that. For that I want to press Control D. Now you can see cat one two three means it will display the hello world. Means what are the contents in one two three? It is displaying here. That is cat command. So now I want to copy one file to another. So I am using the command is called cp. Cp one two three two four five six. So you can see it is copied. What are the contents in one two three? It is copied to four five six. We can see cat four five six is displaying hello world. What is the content in the one two three file? The same content that means we are copying the same file to another name. That's all. It's not moving. We are copying. So now I am creating one more directory for creating directory. mk dir directory name test 123 that is a directory name so if we ls you can see we create an one directory now i want to remove that directory for removing directory we are using the command called rm dir directory name so if you put ls you can see the directory is deleted So like that, you can remove a directory. So I think I already mentioned removing a file. You can um, remove a file using rm suppose two. Now ls means the file is removed. That is the command rm. Then copy command we already checked. The copy command is cp. Move command is we already checked. That is mv cat we already cover. The next one is text editor. Normally we are using VI and Vim. Vim is the advanced version of VI. I will show you. Using VI, you can open this file, edit this file, and save. VI one two three. Now the hello world is came. If you want to edit the file, then first you want to go to insert mode. Insert mode. Then you want to press the I on your keyboard. Then only the edit mode will appear. Then you can edit. So I am putting your text as L S H. If you want to save, means escape colon W Q. W Q means write and quit. So I am entering this command. That means it will save and quit. Cat, one, two, three. It will show. What are the commands I am doing? Second one is vi, one, two, three. So I type something here. I go to insert mode and type something ASD or something. So I don't want to save these things. So right now you want to do means you want to just quit this thing. Escape colon Q. Q. If you put the cat command, you can see that not appeared. Mean we are not saved that file. Next one is vi two three. You want to add something here, and you want to save this point, and you want to work again. So for that, escape colon w. So it will save. And again, you can. You want to edit means you can edit here. So you can edit. I T B. Press it. Again, if you want to save and quit, you can save and quit. Cat. One two three means you can see what are the contents in that file. You can see. 
this is regarding v editor for v editor there is a lot of options are there you can copy you can delete using command line it is possible you just refer the man pages of vi then you will understand n number of options are there you can find search everything is possible using vi so next is advanced version is vim i think this version is vim is not installed we can install it and check it later so this is regarding vi now just you want to check the file sizes or you want to check the free spaces of your hard disk you to come and call to df it will show like this what are all the file system it is not in a human readable format i already explained here for each and every command there is n number of options are there so now i am putting one more option in this that is minus h minus h means it is human readable format putting this now you can see in a human readable format like gbs you can see in slash save sda 6 46 gb hard disk space is there out of the 2.1 gb is used 42 gb is free like that it is in human readable format that's why i am using minus h if you want to refer this command go like this you can see n number of options are there minus h this is i use minus h so you can see in a human readable format that is now you want to check the size of a file or disk usage for that command we are using du 1 2 3 it is showing like this is not in a human readable format so i am putting du minus h is saying 4k like that minus h means human readable format so this way you can check the size of a file now we are moving to some advanced commands but we are not going lot of advanced commands some simple useful commands on is top top command you can see what are the process currently running what are the cpu usage what are the memory usage swap usage everything you can see you can see the process is changing that means this command top means display the cpu processes you can see what are the process currently running what are the ids of the process how much ram it is taking and everything you can see that is a top process next is free 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 command for free command it will display what are the memory and swaps what is the total memory of your hard disk and how much ram it is using currently how much ram it is free how much swap space it is using how much swap space it is free everything you can see see using the free command if you need more options about free command you can go to man pages of free and you can see what are the options there is a lot of options are there you can see that next is a history command history means you can see what are the commands you type on this hard disk there are around 68 commands type all the commands you can see here you can see all the commands here for that purpose we are using history so now we are looking for an important command called tar command tar is commonly using for backup or archiving purpose so you can see there is a three four files are there one two three four five files are there i want to tar it and keep it as a single file normally it is using for backup purposes so i will give you tar command tar then i want to give options minus c minus c means create and minus v 
v means verbose and minus f, f means file. Now I want to specify the file name and I am specifying as yes, test dot tar. Then I want to specify what all are the files I want to include it on the tar files. I am including 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5 and sorry, 4, 5, 6. So you can see it is tarred. We specify minus V in the um, option that is why this 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5 and 4, 5, 6 is displaying here that means this, this, this files are tarred and create a file name called test.tar. If you put ls you can see there is a called test.tar file. So now we want to check what are the files I specified here it is already tar. Temporarily I am creating a folder here IITB then I am moving this tar file to that IITB for folder I have already specified the command to move and it is tested or tar to IITB. Now you can see that tested or tar file is moved to IITB. So I am going to IITB folder you can see the moved folder is here test dot tar. Now the next command is I want to untar. Once I tar, I want to untar this file, and you want to check what are the files we tar is extracting here. So for extracting, that means untaring this, we want to use the same command tar minus x. X means extracting, untaring. X v f then test dot. You can see one two three three four five six. These files we tarred here, we untarred here, we got all the five files here. That is the untar command. This is some basic commands regarding, I think people just go through these commands and also some basic commands is available. Please go through this command. Tomorrow morning there is a simple quiz regarding this basic commands and Ubuntu installation. Why we are conducting this test means Professor Fatak instead me around 80 percent of the people are not familiar with Linux, at least few people familiar with some of the Linux commands and some of the basics of Ubuntu installation. Then only you can follow what are the things, what are the softwares we are configuring tomorrow. At least you should familiar with this command lines and this type of com commands, basic commands. Then only you can follow the tomorrow whole day session. Then only you can configure a small server. This is not I am not telling the small server. If it is a desktop PC is also enough. You can install it on the packages that required for the 10th and 11th workshop. So please go through these commands. If you have any queries, any doubts regarding this, you just post it on the Moodle forums. We will answer you and I will answer some of the questions now itself. Also there is a command called the last. If you put the command last, you can see who all are logged in, when they logged in. Right now myself only logged in in this PC, that is why it is showing like this. IITB when I logged in 26, it is showing still I logged in, that is why. One more command is the who, you can see who all are logged in here using who. What is the same command is looks like W. So I think we can go for some questions, I will answer some questions. So some of them are facing some error in installing Ubuntu. So maybe the CD is corrupted, you just download the CD from the Moodle and try with that. And also some of them are asking what are the um, packages you want to install. Basically we are dealing with the packages um, Apache 2, PHP 5, MySQL, hyphen ser MySQL server and Tomcat and OpenJDK. These all are the packages required. 
during the corresponding session that uh, my colleagues will explain what are the packages you required okay one more question is coming how to install software packages so i will explain so once again how to install the packages you know, first you want to put the cd the software cd on the cd drive okay then the screen will look like this you click on the start package manager it will ask the password and give the password so now you can see in the top quick search there which package you want to install you want to specify that package i am installing ddd so you can see the ddd so click here then the screen will come mark for installation i click on that it is taking all the dependency packages mark then click on apply and then apply now it is installing ddd packages is installing you can see the packages is installing some of the people are maybe connected the internet connection then you just if you are using the cd then just remove the internet cable and try in the cd will work fine otherwise it will directly go to internet and download it from there if your bandwidth is very less it will take so much time to install the simple packages now you see from the cd within seconds the packages is installed if your bandwidth is very low then it will take so much time to install a simple package so i think one more package i will install that is vim i will try to install vim i am clicking on you can see the vim is come here so i clicking on this check box then it will come mark for installation i want to click on mark for installation another window will come it will take all the dependency packages now you can see the vim is highlighted here now i want to click on apply then apply so it will install the corresponding packages vim you can see the vim is installed it's installing if you click here the details you can see what are the happening what are the packages is installing so you know, we can see from the cd it is installed very quickly but if your internet bandwidth is very low it will take so much time i think some of the senders has already apt mirrors then you can <coughs> install from the apt mirrors itself it's possible i will install one more package as it is open office open office dot org you can see i am clicking on open office for org so it is taking so much dependency files you can see here i click on that but it is automatically taking click on mark for installation you can see these all are the dependency packages that ubuntu will automatically take so now click on apply and apply it will take some time you can see around 32 packages you want to install so that's why we send the software cds otherwise it will take so much time to install these packages then you people will be in trouble to installing these packages so you can put this cd on the cd drive and you can install it from this software cd only one condition is the cd will work with ubuntu 10.04.4 32 bit open office installation is started
anyway in this uh, software cd there are a number of packages are there it include vim gcc ddd build essential nmap then port map open office apache 2 php 5 mysql server php myadmin pg admin postgres sql n number of packages are there what are the packages we required that we will explain today uh, tomorrow on morning onwards so i think using the synaptic uh, package manager uh, how to install the software packages is clear so somebody asked a question before installing vim package what we should install you can install any packages there is no need any packages you can install anytime then this not an issue how this ubuntu software is related to akash um, not mingle with uh, akash tablet and ubuntu uh, for what purpose we are configuring this uh, ubuntu server means there is a module called qs module in each and every akash tablet it is i think some of the remote senders know on the previous workshop in 2009 and 10 we used a device called a clicker so now we port that application to akash tablet so using an akash tablet uh, a students can attend a qs for setting up that we are using ubuntu So for that purpose, we are going to tomorrow. We will, and they will explain how to configure a clicker server. Uh, there are a lot of question. What are the software packages installing right now? I am not installing any software packages. For just an introduction, how to install some software packages? That's why I use the Vim and Open Office, GCC, DDD, Build Essential, something. i think um, uh, some of the softwares i already mentioned all the softwares are available on that cd if you want to try you can try that the softwares available on the cd is are vim gcc ddd build essentials then open office.org then apache 2 php 5 mysql and etc Ah, okay. Some of the errors are uh, that is before in, uh, ejecting the CD. Some of the errors will come in your screen. There is no need for worry. You just press enter, then it will go. Once you restart the machine, the machine will work fine. Ah, Agash tablet is required wireless connection. There is no wired connection. Agash tablet is required wireless connection. Regarding that, how to set up a wireless router or how to set up a wireless simple access point, we will demonstrate tomorrow itself. so i think most of the institute have their own wifi so then you can use that wifi you can directly connect to that wifi and also in the 10th and 11th workshop in which classroom or which seminar room you are conducting that workshop in that room wifi should be enabled we need wifi the simple wifi is simple access point or simple router is okay for that agash tab having usb yes agash tablet has usb so oh, there are a lot of questions regarding moodle so actually we are not conducting any moodle session how to configure moodle it is not we are conducting we are uh, familiarizing moodle how you can use moodle i think most of the <coughs> participants are newer to moodle they are seeing first time moodle maybe some of you are colleagues or are also like that so using moodle how you can download the presentation how you can submit assignments how you can conduct quizzes how you can take feedbacks that things we will cover on the 29th session morning session we will cover how familiar with moodle how you can use moodle how you can submit assignments because on the main workshop we will use moodle for collecting feedback tomorrow we will use moodle for conducting quiz for that familiarizing all the participants or all the remote center coordinators we are using moodle because you people the coordinators and the technical people want to help the other participants in your college how to use moodle for that purpose only we are showing moodle we are not uh, conducting any demonstration or any demonstration of how to configure moodle i think moodle is uh, open uh, free and open source you can download it from the moodle site and you can use if you need any help regarding moodle configuration you just post it on the forums we will help you
I think there is a question called insert CD and it is not appearing in the search menu. When you put on the CD on the CD drive or the software CD on the CD drive, one two windows will come. One window is a synaptic start package manager. You click on the start package manager, then only you can see the search option. Please close the another window that is opening and showing all the files over there. You just close that window and click on the start package manager it will ask for the password you just give the your system password then the next window will come synaptic package manager in the synaptic package manager in the top you can see the search option all the uh, lectures that for this 25 26 29 30 we will put it as an open source material in the nme ict website you can go there and watch this videos so uh, there is a question from Ubuntu, can we use Fedora instead of Ubuntu? I already mentioned you can use any distribution but the software should work. What are the software we are demonstrating here? It should work on any, uh, uh, it should work, that is the only impression because we are using here Ubuntu servers and we are already configured it on Ubuntu server and we are tested with Ubuntu servers, that is why we are using Ubuntu here. So, if you, <coughs> you want to use any distribution, you can use, it will work, but you want to try it out if it is working or not. If it is working fine, then it is okay. Okay, there is a question, good question, how to install package without synaptic package manager. So, if you want to install packages through command line, it is possible, I will show you. But we are, I am not connected my machine to the internet, so I will just type the command here. You can see sudo apt get install via. This is the command. If you put this command and enter, then it will install. It will ask for the password will give an error because I am already started synaptic package manager. That is why it is giving error. Otherwise, if you have net, otherwise, if you have your own apt repository, you can install it using this command apt get installed. What are the package you need? That package you want to specify here. Open office.org, you can specify here. If you need something else, Apache 2, you can specify here. If you need, you want to install multiple packages at a time, you can give space and you can give PHP 5, then DDD, then space, some other packages, build essential, <coughs> build essential, like this way you can install the packages. I think this doubt is clear. Okay, yum, someone specify yum command, yum command, maybe you are using Fedora, that is why you are using yum command. If this is also possible, but you want to install him, then it is also possible. Please tell about Wi Fi requirements. Wi Fi requirement means um, for connecting Akash tablet for getting internet connection, you need a Wi Fi. So, you can purchase a Wi Fi router, otherwise, links is a lot of Wi Fi access points are available. It is like links is dealing Netgear. You can purchase one bulk in some of things are available. You can purchase one from the market and you can configure it and use, connect it to your LAN and you can use. It is necessary to purchase Wi-Fi. Yes, for tomorrow sessions, there is no need to purchase a Wi-Fi. If you have Wi-Fi, you can see because in different remote centers, uh, people are using different Wi-Fi's like I already specified, it is like Linksys or Cisco, otherwise dealing Netgear something. So, maybe tomorrow we will show it through Linksys Wi-Fi. So, you can purchase any one of the Wi-Fi and you can configure. Okay, most of the people are saying you are not able to see your package. So, you just go to the Moodle, then you can see there is a, a software installation PDF is there. In the PDF, exact screenshot is there. You can go through it, then you will understand. So, wait for a minute, I will show you the Akash tablet. A lot of people are asking Akash tablet related question. I will show you what is the Akash tablet. You can see the Akash tablet. This is an Akash tablet. This is an older version, not a newer version. You people will receive another one. 
Yes, this is an Akash tablet look like this. So, when it boot it look like this. I think Professor Fartak already shown to you. Anyway, I will switch it off and restart then only you will understand what is the OS. Okay, <coughs> this is an Akash tablet. You people see this Akash tablet. In this Akash tablet there is no network or RJ45. You can see only this thing this is for micro SD card. You can see this is for micro SD card. This is the charging point and this is the micro USB and this is for the headphones. So, for connecting to internet you need a Wi-Fi. So, right now I am switching on this Akash tablet. You can see the logo is coming. It is an Android base. You can see so Android is the Naga tablet is booting. It will take some time to boot. Yes, now it is boosted up. You can see the wallpapers. So, <coughs> I am logging to Agash tablet. So, you can see the Wi Fi. We want to connect to Wi Fi, then only it will work. You can see here the Wi Fi points. can see here I think it is not clear you can see through this only you can connect the Wi-Fi you need Wi-Fi otherwise it is not able to connect to internet so I am connecting to this Wi-Fi ok so already connected so now I want to browse this so these all are the packages we uh, I think the professor Fatak is already told you regarding this these all are the packages you want to install in your remote centers you can see one is blender that is we are developing some animations using this blender. So, you can see some videos using this blender so, blender animation from This application is developed in IIT Bombay. So, we port it into Akash tablet. You can see this is for some engineering education purpose videos. You can see, you can, I think you can hear the audio also, the audio is also coming. So, another thing I will show you. You can see clicker, this clicker, this application we are using for the next workshop. For th through that we want to conduct users. Right now we are not connected to the server. If we connect the server then only the thing will come. So, for connecting to the server, surely you need a Wi-Fi. Now you can see one more application app droid. It is exactly like a Google Play. It is an open source software. We configured our server on here. I think some of the participants are already they are using Android phones then they know what is Google Play. They want to download some software packages you want to connect to Google Play and from there they want to install like that for but some of the softwares it is paid but it, that is not open source. So, this is an application in open source we already configured a server over here we are keeping the server we are updating the server or from here. So, you can see what are the packages in that. So, you can see it is not clear, but I think people can see these packages. These all are the packages already there. If any updates came, then it will show the updates here. It will come here the updates 1 or updates 2. If anybody is using Google Play, then they can understand very easily. Then here the available packages. Right now, we are not put any packages here, then only it will come. So, this is the thing. So, for connecting to this servers, you need a Wi Fi. Without Wi Fi, the Akash tablet is not able to connect to internet. So, during the 10th and 11th workshop, we need Wi Fi. 
and internet also wifi enable uh, internet enabled wifi so then only you can connect it to our server then only you can attend the quizzes what we are launching it from here that is related to agash tablet i think most of the people understand i already mentioned we are keeping a repository here but also you can keep a repository in your sender for that purpose we are training you people ubuntu and server configuration so you people want to create you can develop your own application for your colleges your your students and you can put it on that server and if it is a good package we will also put it in our server also for that purpose one question is coming what is the purpose of ubuntu and related software with akash because i already told you regarding this if once we give a tablet to you people we want to update the software otherwise we want to give some updates what are the packages we are providing we want to give some updates some changes then we will put it on our server it will synchronize with your server and updates will come to your tablets that is the main idea because our servers are running on the linux platform that's why we are teaching ubuntu installation the second one is very for a linux beginner ubuntu installation is very simple they can understand very easily that is the second reason we are choosing ubuntu installation i think some i already mentioned these things some of the um, uh, participant from different colleges they know how to install a ubuntu server even you will not get a control on mouse it will only on text based so i think you people will understand for a beginner how much it is difficult that's why we conduct a session on ubuntu desktop installation i think the point is clear thank you thank you very much Thank you.